Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. If you've been with my channel a while, you may have realized that if there's one thing I really love makeup wise, it's a full face palette. Even if it's not a well done one, I'm intrigued by it and I wanna try it and review it. The one we're talking about today is from Laura Geller and it's called RSVP Ready, full face palette, everything you need, want, and more. And it's a little bit wider than a cell phone, you know, and it folds out this way and we've got bronzer, cream highlights and correctors. We've got powder, blush, and highlight. And then we've got eyeshadows, brow products, and eyeliner, and then a mirror. So what does this remind anybody of? To me, it makes me think of those It Cosmetics beauty books. I have the most recent one right over here. Um, I review these every year when they come out around holiday time. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for this year's. Um, Size-wise, it's just a little bit smaller than this Laura Geller one. But these have a really similar three-panel fold-out format. But it's different products inside. So I don't know if Laura Geller just decided, you know, that's enough It Cosmetics. We're putting out one of these too. I saw an ad for this come across on Facebook um, just a few days ago, so I ordered it. It came really quick, and I've played around with some of the stuff in here, doing a little swatching, but I haven't worn it like full on altogether on my face. And today I'm going to do that, and I feel like it's kind of one of those products that really claims to be simplified and easy, and you know, look gorgeous on the go, they say, universal full face palette. And when it's one of those things that's marketed as a real easy, all-in-one, anybody can pick it up and run with it kind of product, I think I should be able to get on here without a bunch of practice, without a bunch of trial and error first, and see how it goes and hopefully be able to turn out a good look for you. You know what I mean with stuff like this? Like if I'm reviewing a palette, a big eyeshadow palette, I want to use that thing quite a few times before I get on here and talk about it because I want to experiment with most of the shades, I want to have some looks to show, I want to have some experiences. Here, when one of the selling points is the simplicity of the product, I I really should be able to get on here without giving it a bunch of tests and tries and see if I can just put a look together like most people would as soon as they get it. So what I already have on my face is some Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, just the regular formula. I wear that in soft beige. Got that all over my skin so we can jump into these correctors over here. So we have several. We have a pinky peach, a real true peach, and then a brightening yellow corrector. So I'm going to use these and just see how it goes around the eyes and I guess possibly various places around the face. I'm going to first go into the real peachy one and I'm going to start dabbing that around like my inner corner. The texture of these seems good. They feel creamy. They don't feel dry at all. One of the nice aspects of the It Cosmetics palettes was that whenever there were creams in there, they never seemed to dry out. This is my first Laura Geller palette of this kind, so I can't really say um, how that's going to go, but right now they seem really creamy. I'm actually going to use some of that peach kind of as concealer too just around here. And on this panel, we have creams, but we do have one powder also. I would have probably preferred that we kept all one texture on one side, you know, but hopefully that uh, powder bronzer up top doesn't create a lot of fallout. Okay, I'm blending in some of this peachy corrector. I don't feel like it's really moving mountains, but it's doing a little bit for me. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow down here too around the nose area, hoping that that might also help out the redness a bit. I don't have a ton of redness, but there is some, especially after you have a cold. Okay, let's go in with this real pinky one now, and hopefully this will amp us up brightness-wise. Yeah. And everything has kind of like a celebratory name, like gift bag, thank you note, and place cards. Laura Geller is a brand, if you're not really familiar with it, she's really known for her baked products. So like baked Balance and Brighton powder foundation, the baked blushes are very popular. This is the first time she's put out something that I've tried that's been this full face kind of fold out beauty book type deal. I can tell I'm definitely brightened up here. The correctors are okay, but not like amazing. I'm thinking about the effect I get when I pop on my Bobbi Brown corrector stick in Bisque, you know, or even my Becca 
under eye brightening corrector. Those really go there. Here I'm still kind of seeing some darkness. It's like they're brightening but there's a sheerness. So now I'm wondering what would happen if I put on just a little bit of a skin tone concealer that's outside of this palette. Let's just go with incognito since we did use wet and wild foundation underneath as well. Just add a little bit of a skin tone on top to enhance our overall coverage a little bit, just in this like under eye zone. Facebook ads, I tell you, that's how I found out about this. It's like they know exactly what I like. In pops a full face palette. Okay, this is helping. Your own concealer may be something you want to pull in. Um, just thinking comparison wise to the It Cosmetics Beauty books, they put in the Bye Bye Under Eye correctors in there, but they're more like skin tone oriented. Less of just a brightening corrector step, so I think they do a little more. That was helpful. That's kind of gotten me where I want to be now, coverage-wise. I'm okay with the correctors, but I'm not jumping up and down with them. Now, they say there's a translucent finishing powder in here, and I think that could only be this shade right here called Jubilee. As you can see, it gives off, you know, some color, but once you kind of sheer that out, you can see it is a fairly lightweight product. It's not trying to be powder foundation. What I'm going to do here is go in with my Morphe Under Eye Bullet Brush, and I'm just going to set with that powder. It's interesting, it seems like we're getting a baked texture in these powders, but it's odd seeing them in these flat pans as opposed to the domed kind of uh, compacts we usually see from Laura Geller. Um, this powder seems to be mattifying me a little bit. I'm gonna hit on top of the cheeks just to see kind of what that does. Yeah, definitely a mattifying powder. Moving on, we're going back to this panel now, to this bronzer. It's called Garland. It seems like it has a little satin finish to it, so I'm going to dive into that. Hmm, seems like it's going to be a pretty slow build. I am getting a decent swatch on my finger. Okay, I'm seeing it a little bit. As it builds, yeah, that's actually a really pretty bronzer. It's got a really nice finish on the skin. It looks very skin-like. A little contour with that. It feels like less pigmented than her Balance and Brighten, or Bronze and Brighten, excuse me. Bronze and Brighten bronzers. Those I really don't feel like I have to build this much, but it's not bad. It's buildable. It's picking up kind of little by little. I am not mad at the look so far. I'm pretty pleased with the bronzer experience. Now we're going to move on to blush. And when they said a blush was in here, like I was reading the little description on the back of the sleeve, I was thinking, oh, I don't remember seeing a blush. Well, it's got to be this shade right down here, this one called, uh, what's it called, Shall We Dance? Um, I think that's a blush, that's a powder highlight, and then again we have our cream illuminators over on the first panel. It's dusty, it's soft. I tried this out like on top of another look the other day, but I kind of concluded that I needed to see it without anything else on my face blush-wise. But it's got a dusty rose look that's very soft and some little like baked streaks in there of a champagne shimmer. So I'm going to pick some of that up with my blush brush and we'll see what we can see. Okay, it's showing up a little bit more, but I feel like I'm scrubbing on it, kind of. That's pretty. There's the color. You know, it's one of those real sneaky, unusual sort of blushes. Um, showing up with a good amount of warmth on the cheeks, actually. I would say the textures I'm experiencing from like the bronzer and the blush aren't quite the luxe nature we're used to dipping into when you get a standalone baked product from Laura Geller. But you know, I am seeing the color and my only thought here is for this to be a universal palette that anybody could buy any skin tone. I'm almost a little surprised they didn't go for a blush that was deeper, that a fair skin person could just use more lightly, but would show up more intensely on deeper skin too. Next, we're going to do a little highlight layering. I want to use some of the creams and then we'll pop on the powder one as well. So we have two shades here. One is called Disco Ball and one is called Tea Lights, all right? Disco Ball is the super brightening cream and Tea Lights, wow, Wow, that looks like a straight up metallic gold. They both look like they've got a lot of potential. I'm gonna play with Disco Ball right here. Dab in, just use my finger. 
Wow. You could be Tin Man with this if you wanted to. I'm taking a little brush just to dab over that and help the blend. I don't want to blend away other coverage underneath. That's pretty. That really did something. Get some on your finger. It looks like that. Bam. Well, bam. <laughs> There's a lot to it. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of the more golden one and maybe we just use a little bit of this like up here. That's pretty too. Texture wise, they're creamy, but they're not real goopy or tacky at all. So you can pop those on on top of your other steps and not really feel like you've messed with the overall surface of the skin. Okay. I might take a little bit of Disco Vol and just highlight the Cupid's bill a bit. Um, you'll notice something this palette doesn't have that the it cosmetics always throws in are um, lip products. There's no lip colors in here. Moving on to the last thing in these two palettes that we haven't yet used, we have a highlighter right here in the middle, and it's called Pinata. <laughs> and to me, it kind of looks like rose gold, but it's got this cool, almost pinky lavender swirl throughout. And it looks like it could be pretty vibrant. So I'm just going to dab into this with my Real Techniques setting brush. And yeah, even though we really don't need much more highlight, we're going to go on top with that. And wow. Holy cow. I mean, some of that's the layering effect, but I think this is a very prominent highlight, even just on its own. You can just tell by the amount of shimmer in it. I'm picking up a little more. I'm going over here, and we're really getting that glazed donut vibe going, but we may have to temper this a bit. I'm just letting you know what's happening in this palette, guys. For future reference on highlights, I would say pick one. Pick one. I'm going into a little bit of that setting powder now. And I'm just going to go over this. Remember I said it was mattifying, so we'll see if it has any effect over top of this. It actually does. Okay, that was a little bit smoothing. Nice, okay. All right, so now we're moving on to brows, and I would say the brow colors in here are probably meant to be these two, although I think they could very much be eyeshadows as well. So these shades are called Guest List and Hors d'oeuvres right down here. So this is probably like your blonde, taupey kind of color. This would be probably the one I will use. I'm gonna use this little angled eyebrow brush from Profusion. I'm gonna go into the Hors d'oeuvres shade, and we'll see if we can just fill in these brows a bit, huh? Um, I appreciate how cool the shade is. Sometimes it's kind of tricky when you go in with just straight powder because you feel like, is it really clinging in there? And you know, I've got a decent amount of brow hair, so I'm like hoping I'm getting onto the skin with some of the shade I'm trying to fill in with. I'm good with that. That's a, that's a decent brow filled in with powder here. I feel like I'm in intense concentration mode with this brow powder. It's like when you choose a new method, suddenly you're just locked in. I've got that in there, but I'm gonna put on a little bit of brow gel because what I don't get from that is any hold, really. So we'll do a little gel. Now, could you do this palette without adding any foundation underneath? I think you could. I think you just get, you know, a much lighter coverage just working with those correctors. So I don't know if I'd be real content with that, but I guess you could. I think this is put out more with the assumption of you figure out your own coverage shade and then we'll take care of the rest, you know? Okay, so, so far, all that's been added to this palette has been my foundation. I added a little bit of incognito concealer and the brow gel. But now we're thinking eyeshadow look and I'm wondering, should I put on some separate eyeshadow primer or should I just try to make one of these correctors work? I think I might just go with one of the correctors, you know, let's try like the pinky one. It'll neutralize a little bit. Yeah, I think this can work. It's not feeling too heavy and goopy, but it's neutralizing and it will give the eyeshadow a little something to cling to, okay? So here's our little eyeshadow panel. Again, those are the brow colors. They listed off the fact that there's an eyeliner in here. I'm assuming that's it, but any of these could become eyeshadows. We have shimmers that really do appear to be a baked type of formula, and these two are mattes right here as well as this one. So here's the part where it gets kind of hard to hold because the whole thing's flopping open, but I'm gonna use this mic check shade right here, and we're gonna try to use that as our started out crease color, okay? I think it's going to have a little more depth on the eyes than it seems to have in the palette. Yeah, it's got a little bit. Again, I think brow shades are fair game. 
as eyeshadows too. I kind of wish we had maybe a little less of the shimmer and more mattes to play with here, but we will make it work. Okay, there's that shade. Now I'm going to go to the brow color that I put in my brows, this hors d'oeuvres color, and just kind of add that to the actual deepest part of my crease. That seems to be working all right. We have two tones here. One is a little more yellowy, one's a little more pinky. Um, I'm going for the more pinky toned one, and we'll use that right up here. I bet you could even like really brighten up just your under eye area with a little bit of that. Yeah. Pigment wise, by the way, if you're just kind of curious, some of these very baked appearing ones, ooh, that's interesting. They have a little more dryness to the touch, but I don't think that really affects the pigment. As you can see, we're still getting some very full color out of those shimmers. We have various takes on bronze here, kind of like a dark old gold, a bronze, a copper, a pinky toned one, kind of this soft goldeny pink. And then this shade's interesting here called On My Way. It appears to have a little bit of a bluish tinge, but also a gold reflectivity. That's interesting. Um, next up, I'm going to go into my brow color hors d'oeuvres with a flat brush. And I'm just going to pat that on the outer part of my lid. And I definitely wouldn't be scared to use the black as eyeshadow as well, but I do know I want to use it as eyeliner, so I want it to be able to contrast a little bit. I don't want to go so dark with the eyeshadow that you won't see my eyeliner. But this shade is doing a decent job deepening up that outer part of my lid. Um, as I look at the eyeshadows, my first thought was, I wish we had more depth variety here too, like getting a little darker. There's so many mid-tones right in here. It's like five mid-tones, and they still seem like pretty shades. There's just not as much variety. I'm going back into that brow color. That may be the MVP. And I'm using my little small pointed brush so we can really shape that outer corner. doing okay. Uh, it's working for us. Now what if we want to fade out of that with a little bit of warmth? How about a little bit of shindig right here? This copper. Maybe we could take a little bit of that. Ooh, that's pigmented. Letting some of that kind of come up above the crease. A little bit of warmth. How about a lot bit of warmth? Just using my space, okay? So that's a shimmer. And you can see it shears out to not look quite so metallic. Um, I'm now going to want to come in with a bare brush. Blend that edge. Maybe use one of the light shades again for smoothing purposes. Okay, and then what do we want to use on the lid? I want to try a little bit of this shade called On My Way. It's kind of like, has a little bit of a grayish bluish thing, but then the reflectivity is golden. But a very soft gold. It's pretty, it's kind of unique. It looks pretty actually sort of bumping up against that cool shade. I feel like I want to sneeze. Really brightening. Okay, um, then I think I'm gonna use some of my brow shade and a smudge brush and use a little bit of that down here on the lower lash line for some definition. Okay, nothing wrong with that. There we go, and then lastly here, we're gonna use the eyeliner. This black shade called Late Night looks like just a pitch black shade. I'm using my angled liner brush, and I'm just gonna come in here across the upper lash line and apply some of that. Mainly, you know, I'm keeping it out here. I don't want to cover up too much of the nice brightness. It's very pigmented. It's the kind of color that really makes sense for this step because it's laying down easily. You don't want to have to build and build over one little line, you know? So I'm just trying to stay in real close to the lashes and hopefully that wears well. Okay, my friends, so here is the finished look. I just added mascara. I'm wearing It Cosmetics Superhero, and I added my lip color as well. I'm wearing one of the Too Faced Coco Bold lipsticks, which these are a lot of fun. Magnetic Closure, and this shade is called Chocolate Chip, and I love the scent. It kind of reminds me of some kind of toy I had back in the day that claimed to be chocolate scented, like it's not real chocolate, but um, it gives you this really pretty brownish hint of rose in 
the lip color, so I've just been kind of looking for a reason to use that in a video. But how are we feeling about the end result here with the Laura Geller RSVP Ready palette? First off, I think, you know, packaging wise, I love something that's so streamlined like this. Same with it cosmetics. I love how there's so much in one and they kept it really compact. You know, not a lot of frills with the outer packaging, but there doesn't need to be. As far as the best products in here, I feel like the highlighters are pretty strong. Like they came away with a very pigmented highlighter here and there's a lot going on in the creams as well. And I did like the blush. I kind of like the way the face steps came together, the powder face steps. Even though I felt like I needed to build the bronzer a bit, I thought the look was pretty. And I actually like that there's a setting powder in there as well. The blush, the highlight, it all worked together nicely. These correctors, as standalone products, I'm not a huge fan. I feel like they're a nice texture. There is some good pigment in there to make them sort of play off of the color you think you're getting. You do see that on the skin, but I don't really feel like they stand alone. Like I definitely needed to pop on some additional concealer to be content with the look. Brow wise, I do think these shades could probably suit a lot of people between this and this. Um, the eyeliner was nice. The eyeshadows, I just think we need more range. I would have appreciated, you know, more matte than shimmer probably, although I know baked shimmer is kind of a trademark of Laura Geller, but maybe a couple more mattes in there and a little less in the way of mid-tones and more darkness because I just kept coming back to this brow shade to handle some of the darkness I wanted on the eyes outside of the eyeliner. So guys, I love Laura Geller's brand. I think she does so many things well. I think this is a decent palette, but I don't think I'd put it up there with the It Cosmetics ones. I mean, there are some differences here that make it interesting. They didn't put lip colors in and I'm not really missing a lip color, you know, but I think a neat thing about the It Girl beauty books that they do is they put in some products that we know and love from the brand and they execute them well in the palette. Like the Bye Bye Pores Press Powder is phenomenal in here. These creamy correctors are great. The Bye Bye Pores Bronzer is awesome. They always put in a great blush. A few lip colors this most recent year they didn't put in as many. Now this is last year's by the way. This is not something that just came out. I'm still waiting to see what It Cosmetics does this holiday season. But just for reference, you know, I feel like a little better range in the eyeshadows. And they've been putting something out like this for years. I think they've got a pretty good handle on it. They kind of sum it up on the box as all your essentials conveniently tucked away for when you're on the go. And I could see it being handy for that because I open it up and yeah, I've got bronzer, I've got powder, I've got totally usable highlights and blush. I do have some eyeshadows. I can obviously create a decent look with them. Like, I don't mind this look. As far as the additional things I use, not counting brushes, you know, I can fit them all in one hand. That's my foundation, my concealer, my brow gel, mascara, and lipstick. So I'm not mad at it. I'm, in fact, I'm really glad Laura Geller went for something like this. While I might not be absolutely over the moon with everything in it, I do still think it's a good product. I think it's got a lot of benefits and I think I will continue to use it on and off. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've had a chance to try this. What's your take on it? What are your favorite parts, least favorite parts? Let's discuss and I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.